That's great. You're too kind. <laughs> I, I want to exp uh, share a story. I, um, this past week, uh, Wednesday, I was uh, at um, I was on University of Michigan's campus, and I was at a Young Americans for Freedom meeting, and I was introduced to the new chair of the College Libertarians, a young man named Zach DeVozo. And uh, Zach was at the YAF meeting, Young Americans for Freedom meeting, I said, well, Zach, uh, I'm great that you're you know, heading up the College Libertarians, and I'm also glad you're here at the YAF meeting. What made you decide to get involved with the College Libertarians instead of getting active with the uh, YAF or getting active with the Senate group? He said, well, my philosophy is libertarian. I said, well, I understand that, but 80% of the kids at the YAF meeting are libertarians, too. And so my philosophy is libertarian, and I believe in the movement, and I believe the Libertarian Party is the best banner for me because it's a purist, and the, and, and the best way for me to advocate those things clearly <coughs> without concealing anything. And that, uh, I think, is something uh, that you should take heart in. I think it's an example, though, of a spillover effect that the movement in a broad sense is having. This young man, Zach DeVozo, got motivated and interested in politics because of Ron Paul. And now, Ron Paul, we, we all know what happened with Ron Paul, but what, the question is, what kind of spillover effect would that maybe have on the Libertarian Party? Well, I think it had a, a spillover effect, not just uh, on the Libertarian Party, but the movement in general, but also the Libertarian Party for young people like Zach DeVozo. And when that Zach set up his table, he told me this past uh, fall at U of M's uh, event that they welcome incoming freshmen, and all the political groups set up booths all around this one area of campus by the Diag. Uh, it's called Festival. And the incoming freshmen come and sign up for different clubs. They had over two times the number of sign-ups at the College of Libertarian table this year than they had any year in their history at, the, at U of M. Twice as many uh, that had signed up at any, uh, for the record of the year. Part of that was spillover from Ron Paul. They had a big picture of Ron Paul at the table. Uh, but part of that is a broader understanding at the, of the college level of the word libertarian, something that had, and, and the broader understanding of the concept of libertarianism that's having an impact to the party and to the movement. I think everybody wins when that word becomes better understood, and when I think when a word becomes popular. And, I, and certainly, um, you know, that's having an effect whether. I look, see more and more on uh, Facebook pages, and heck, I was just at the North Oakland Republican Club meeting uh, this two days ago, where they are, the North Oakland Republican Club is having sort of a catharsis meeting. They brought in a panel of experts to talk about what was wrong with the Republican Party and why they weren't generating traction, why they experienced the losses they had. And an uh, increasing number of people identified themselves as libertarian or libertarian Republicans. Now, that's having a spillover effect there. The spillover effect into the Libertarian Party, the spillover effect on the people who don't participate in any party, so to speak, but are getting involved in politics and ideas and movements. So I think the movement, in a broad sense, is generating traction. And I think that's going to have a great spillover effect in all facets of the movement, you know, one of the, including one the Libertarian of the, Party. <laughs> so I'm one of the panelists on this panel, that was in the so North Oakland Party Club meeting, they were talking about messaging. And uh, he stood up and said, well, we have to get back the reason why we, the Republicans, lost, they said, was because um, Obama had a very positive message, change, and hope, and we got away from our core message. And people are like, well, what's our core message? Well, our core message is we are individualists, and they are collectivists, and we believe in individual solutions, they believe in big government. But the problem is, how could the Republican Party try to say that message with a straight face in the last election, cycle, even if they did the right thing and stuck to their message? They have no credibility with the bear. They'd be viewed as hypocrites. Uh, so, uh, and I think that's one of the reasons that that young man's active also didn't. He didn't want to be a hypocrite. He believed in the word libertarian, the ideas of liberty, and believed the Libertarian Party was a place for him to advocate those particular views and those ideas. So, uh, overall, um, boy, uh, the next few years have given us great opportunities as a movement, and I think uh, for the party as well. Uh, you know, both the destruction and disintegration in many respects of the Republican Party, the good ideas being brought forward by the Ron Paul movement that are staying alive as people are out there talking, and young people, there's nothing dorkier on a college campus right now <laughs> than to be a college Republican. <laughs> it's just not. You know, so what does a kid who doesn't, who's not a collectivist, 
What does a kid who's not a socialist do? He can join up with the dorks, you know, at the college Republicans that wear blue blazers and sit around as a greeting party for old guys that get off airplanes. <laughs> or, uh, or he can get involved in the uh, Young Americans for Freedom, the College Libertarians, or any number of groups that really channel young minds and young ideas <laughs> in our direction. So I think we've got a great uh, opportunity in the next few years. I think the ideas of liberty are, are really taking hold. And we may, you may end up, end up, you all may end up competing for the very ideas, and I think this is healthy, by the way, that you own. Because you're going to see an increasing number of, whether it's the Republican Liberty Caucus, or other or young groups, or other groups, ramping on to the work. I'm very optimistic. The libertarian and, uh, movement in general. With that, I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that anybody has, and Will's got his hand up. Dan, you were earlier talking about petitioning. I was uh, discussing that issue in Lansing with some uh, political people there. And there's apparently a movement among some areas to uh, fight for a constitutional convention in 2010, which you know will be on the ballot. And, and one of their primary goals was to change the petitioning law to make it harder to uh, to do that. So, and, and uh, in other words, uh, there's other things too with as far as the state uh, election primary law is, is unconstitutional. We don't have one. So would you consider the, the, over the next two years between now and the 2010 election, the election reform <coughs> and the 2010 convention that would be the, the top uh, issue politically for the state? Well, the con a constitutional convention, whether the state should have one or not, is automatically on the ballot in 2010. It's constitutionally required to come up every X number of years. Uh, about two years ago, three years ago, a blue ribbon panel of experts, meaning government class, yeah. <laughs> came up with a list of ideas they think should be brought forward in the next constitutional convention. And shockingly, all of these ideas took power from citizens and transferred power to government. Whether it was get rid of term limits, whether it was, we need to, it's ridiculous how easy it is to get things on the ballot. The political class should be in charge of that, not citizens. You know, one thing after another was terrible ideas. So I think that um, there's going to be a lot of people in the government class who want that constitutional convention. They're going to try and organize to get a yes vote for it, because that's a way of transferring power to them. They will hope that citizens are too disorganized to run constitutional delegates themselves, get them elected that will represent citizen interests. The political class is well equipped to win those constitutional convention seats uh, and, uh, and try and take away many of the rights that you yeah, and others have gotten to that kind of right idea. That might be Are there other questions? What do you think the effect of your recall petition will have on this year's budget for the state? Well, none that they'll admit to <laughs> in Lansing. But, you know, many of you are aware that the governor, at least on the record, has said there will be no tax increases in this particular budget. Now, she's saying that, hoping that Obama, the money machine, starts cranking up. There's a bailout for the states. But I, I think definitely, in talking to some of my former colleagues in the legislature and so forth, it definitely had a chilling effect because as much as the fact that we lost that, everybody got to see what the speaker went through. Everybody got to see the petitions turn in, the articles. No, no politician likes having somebody going door to door in the district. Much less 20 to have his maximum effect in the talking about the Watson, but it had a very desired effect, I believe, Dave. Do you mean now calling for tax cuts, Dylan? No, Dylan is calling for restructuring. Restructuring means we got to find a way to make people like paying high taxes. And it's not that they don't pay too much for tax rates too high. We'll just lower their income tax and raise their sales tax. No, they don't like that. We'll raise the sales tax and hike the business tax but lower fees. No, they don't like that. He just thinks there's an, a formula like alchemy that will turn lead to gold. He just has to find a formula and moving pieces around. So when he talks about reducing the, the tax burden on, on businesses, the 22% surcharge, note that he's also linking it to getting away from a flat income tax and going to a graduate income tax. So that, that's the holy grail that the legislature would love to have is a graduated income tax. I hate the flat income tax. Any other questions? No? Well, thanks so very much. Appreciate you guys having me tonight.